I'll tell you what, man, prepping for today's episode is messed with my brain. You know what? <clears throat> I was just telling Ann, it's like all day I felt like I had a homework assignment due, and I'm like, <laughs> oh man, I'm not gonna get this done in time. Are these a good? Are these answers good enough? Cram, cram, cram. I know last night I did mine at 11 o'clock last night. I was like, I'm going to stand down here because I haven't stood all day. So I'm going to stand down here, get my stand minutes in. So I am doing some stuff with the watch. <laughs> You're like, you mother. Just want to say congratulations to the Georgia Bulldogs for their win over Alabama. Alabama. Actually, yeah, uh, I was happy to see them win. Yeah, I, I, everyone kind of assumed it was going to be just a, uh, an ass whooping like sec championship round two right but those 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 kids they they showed up and that was an incredible game Hey everybody, welcome to Dude Check This Out. This is episode three. Uh, we are up to a high subscriber count of eight subscribers. Uh, we did get a lot of people watching the last episode. Uh, I think it was a little bit of an ad campaign we did on, on Facebook to do that. Um, so hey, all of our eight subscribers that are out there, like, share, post comments, criticisms, you know, make a comment about my hair. Is it, is it really that color or is it fake? Um, but uh, we got a we got a pretty good uh, episode today. I think all of them are good. It's just my prerogative. What do you think, Dave? They're all pretty good, right? Yeah, the first one was a little shaky, but uh, yeah, that's what we're getting most, how, we're getting better. Yeah, we're getting worked out. So today we're going to cover um, five binge worthy shows movies whatever whatever it is like on a streaming service or whatever it is just like he's binging is the thing uh, as of late so dave's got five and, and i've got five and just like the last show we'll uh we'll kind of alternate between the two of them what do you think um we're gonna do uh a segment uh, we do quite frequently called uh, the one that got away it's basically some gear that we may have had in the past that uh we wish we still had for reasons we'll get into um and then uh it's my turn this week last week dave did it um and uh so it's my turn this week to do the perfect album and no teasers no hints and that'll that'll pretty much wrap up the episode so uh uh let's uh let's get into it so yeah before we get into our first subject you know this this has been a tough year for celebrities i mean you know every year it seems like you know so there's some surprises of celebrities who pass away and this year you know some just some shockers um you know, uh, Betty White, I know that was at the end, very end of last year. I mean, we all assumed, you know, she was going to outlive Keith Richards or, or, you know, um, another I, one. Yeah. Everybody, you know, <laughs> like the saying going to close uh, up shop here. She was just going to close up shop on earth after the apocalypse. She was going to be like, I'm done now. Yeah. Yeah. She, you know, sliced bread was the best thing since Betty White, you know, <laughs> That's how the saying goes, uh, you know, and more recently, Bob Saget, um, that one really caught me off guard. Um, so, yeah, I was thinking, you know, over this COVID season, I mean, it's, it's, it seems like the never ending cycle season. It's what, 20, 21 and a half or 20, 21.2 or whatever we're at. It's officially the, uh, 106th Friday of 2020 today or something. Yeah. So what, uh, what was the, the, you know, over this, this time period, what celebrity was that had passed away was like the biggest shocker, whether it be from COVID or from other causes. I mean, what, what one hit you the hardest? Oh, wow. That's a, I, I mean, I'm going to be, ha I'm going to have some recency bias because with Betty White, like if I had a picture I could put up, Betty White looks like my grandmother, Mimi, like just like her and had that same twisted sense of humor <laughs> that Betty White had. So that I mean, that's kind of like having my grandmother die a second time. Um, and 
just the, the sheer amount of outpouring that people have like said they loved her in this show and she it, we you know we what we love her there's nothing that she's done that hasn't been great um from the golden girls in fact my wife and some ladies in the neighborhood for halloween a few years ago they dressed up as the golden girls and my wife does a wicked estelle um so I, for me that's the one it really is and and I, I just, for all the people who are watching, like I, her birthday is on January 17th. And I think the thing is, is that on that day, everyone's donating $5 to, I think it's the Humane Society that we're supposed to be doing it to. Um, I'm doing it. Everyone in the family is going to do it. So I would encourage our viewers to do the same. Uh, I think it would be the best tribute we could possibly do for her as fans. So sorry, I, I kind of monopolized that there, Dave, but it is Betty White. And no, that, that's, uh, I mean, understandable. You know, it's there's been uh, over this past couple of years, there's been a, a, a few. I think the one that hit me the, the hardest, though, was Neil Peart from Rush, drummer. Um, you know, that just came out of nowhere because he kept that secret and to himself and just his very closest inner circle knew that he had brain cancer. And when I heard that, I just like I, and I've got him right now. I've got goosebumps. I just it just chills. And, you know course you know there's a couple bands that i consider my favorite and rush is definitely one a or one b um that was a that was a big shocker um him uh eddie van halen i mean of course i mean there yeah there's been a there's been a couple over this you know this year the 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 19 covid so um do you anyways and positive notes, yeah, I actually want to ask you this, because I kind of treated the death of Neil Peart almost like the death of Rush. Like, we're never going to see something new with the original trio ever again. No, well, yeah, that's that's like, uh, you know, when John Lennon died, or it's, you, you just, unless if you have the original, there is none. Um, and they were, they were, leaning that way anyways uh i think they had already decided they were done touring which um just because he couldn't handle the rigors of the road uh like he used to yeah um so yeah but without you could never have rush point two you know with uh with another drummer it just just wouldn't happen he was credited for almost like all of the lyrics right Out, or, outside of the first album when john rutsey was the drummer yeah he, he was the lyricist yeah so that that really kind of sets it so all right what do you say dave if we get into the rest of the more upbeat stuff we're going to talk about sure sounds good to me all right so five binge worthy shows or movies who doesn't love a good binge i don't did we talk about this on episode one about losing time <laughs> yes in the universe to to like what was it? for me it was like snapchat reels i lost yep. saturday rest in peace time, time suck yeah yeah isn't that what you call it a time suck yeah it's a time suck gone Sucks yeah out of your life so um all right so five uh, um, do you want to go first with your fifth one at the bottom sure. here the, yeah. Okay. So the, the first one, uh, is, uh, you know, and I don't know if I should say I'm embarrassed to say, but, um, I like the rom-coms, <laughs> you know, the, this one is, it, it was called lovesick and, uh, it was, um, I think it was on the BBC, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Netflix, uh, and it was about, um, three friends, Dylan, Luke and Evie and, uh, right off the bat, Dylan, who was played by uh, Johnny Flynn, which is um, somebody I want to introduce you to later because he's a uh, uh, his he's a musician as well. And he, um, but anyways, uh, he gets diagnosed with uh, chlamydia, and his doctor says you need to contact all your previous partners. So the whole basis of the story is him doing flashbacks and contacting past almost kind of like uh my name is earl ish you know he's got a list that he's gotta um you know reach out and try to contact each one but it's a it's it's really funny um uh, that i recommend that one that one i think it's only a few seasons but um that that's my 
my first one my number five uh all right my number five is um i think it's on either showtime or hbo but it's the series billions um it's set around a uh a billionaire a hedge fund owner who's kind of a little crooked and a um a district attorney who's just basically hell-bent on putting this guy in jail and i think we're up to like either season three or season four i can't remember it's weird because like i lose track of the seasons when they say this is like a mid-break like normally there's 10 episodes in a season they get to like episode five and they're like stay tuned for the rest of the season or to the you know and you're like what like and they push it out like nine months to a year it's annoying but billions um is a is a really good one that i've been watching we, we're caught up on it we just uh yeah it's good it's good it's a good binge for a number five so uh my number four you kind of mentioned this in our last episode and uh you know it's 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 one of those shows that you don't know why you watch it at first i mean we, we put it off forever but it, this one was a time suck because i think there's like nine eight or nine seasons and then it split off into two other shows and uh the vampire diaries <laughs> so so it, you know the vampire diaries then it then it split off uh to a show called the originals and then the next one was called yeah. legacies but it, yeah it, it's it's so it's about vampires um in a based in a mythological or a made-up town called mystic falls and uh the teenage girl from mystic falls falls in love with this mysterious guy and he's a 162 year old vampire and you know doesn't know it and uh in it in, involved in, 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 the show revolves around them too and his his uh heartthrob brother who's also a vampire uh stefan or uh, salvatore i'm sorry um damon salvatore um and then uh uh it's just one of those shows that uh, we just sat and watched episode after episode. Then they introduce the original vampires and how the the, uh, the the first vampires came to be, and that split off into its own show. And when that, uh, by the way, if you haven't seen these, and I'm spoiling this, these things have been out for a, a long time. So uh, yeah, get with it. Spoiler binge. alert. Binge. <laughs> <laughs> right and then and then this goes into the next series which is legacies which is uh still active so uh we're all caught up with that and that is that series is uh you know based on the daughter of one of these vampires and they'll explain how a vampire can have a daughter in it i'm not going to try but anyways yeah that's my uh my number four i I, I haven't watched, I think, a full episode of Vampire Diaries. My wife and daughters watch that show, I would say, religiously, maybe? I don't know. Um, so I kind of, like, when I'm in the room, walking in to get something and walking out, I feel like I've watched some of it because it seeks, seeps into the brain. And what I get from it, I'll paraphrase here a little bit, is they're all trying to kill each other. <laughs> it's a bunch of good-looking people all trying to kill each other the whole time forever so but it is i guess you know it's good it's good tv i mean I, my wife is a super critical person when it comes to watching certain things and spending time on it so um no time sucked there for my wife she will get value out of it all right um we're on to number four huh so my number four is uh invasion which just uh came out a little i guess it came out a little while i don't know my wife found it she watched the first couple episodes and she's like you would like this you got to watch this so um it's it's funny when you get into this like we're gonna watch this together it's like being married for a, a, an additional dimension of time like you cannot cheat on your partner when it comes to these shows um because it's terrible like did you just watch episode five we were gonna watch that together <laughs> right all right i'll watch it again it's just not the same um but yeah invasion so uh it, it, it it's about what it sounds like. There's alien invasion and alien invasion. And um, the way that they they do the the way that they reveal how things are happening, it's kind of global. There's uh, multiple 
scenes or multiple areas where the plot kind of expands uh, regarding the invasion of these aliens, which I think is kind of cool. So um, there's a little bit of reading because there's a Japanese scene or Japanese um, part of the of it. So um, the way that they do the aliens, how they do the aliens, I guess you could say, or how they how they kind of film them and, and make them become existent where we can see them is pretty interesting because you're like wait did i see what did i see and but you do get to actually see them at a certain point so it's not like they hide it the entire time but so yeah my number four is is invasion and it's on um apple plus or apple the apple so the, so the aliens don't run around in uh cool red outfits uh nope. with uh like remember v Yes, they're not lizard. They're not. They're not lizards in human skin. Right? Remember that was like back in grade school, and that was like, that was like huge. Well, at least it was in your eyes and my eyes. We were both yeah. uh, big V fans. I mean, Freddy Krueger as an alien. Who you know what? What I forget his name, but Robert Robert England. <laughs> yeah, that's him. Yeah, and uh, even to the point where I think for Halloween that year. I, I created my a, a V outfit. No um, visitor uniform. <laughs> yeah, they rebooted that too. It didn't go over very well. Yeah, it didn't because they used some more some modern. You know, it didn't have the cheesy effects. You know, like, like yeah. Cool. Not, not that it was cheesy, but yeah. Sometimes reboots just don't work. No, I don't even think it went a full season. I think they canceled it most of the way through. Yeah, I didn't watch any of it. It just didn't interest me. I just after seeing like the trailer. Yeah good you didn't get you didn't get the time suck applied so let's see my number three yeah this one is a a fairly new i mean i think it's been out a couple years on netflix it's called sex education um and it's another british and for some reason i like some of the british ones um the 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 first uh the debut had 40 million viewers so Wow. It, it came in hot. Um, well, that's kind of like it, bare naked ladies, right? That's like going to pull you in. You're like, we're watching sex education tonight. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so the series, this one's about um, a, a boy named Otis uh, Milburn. Um, and he, in his school, uh, in his school, uh, he's kind of like the, I, I don't want to call him a nerd because he, you know, it doesn't fit in that category. He just, Kind of like a loner type deal mm-hmm. has some friends um but um his mother who's played by jillian anderson is a is a sex therapist and she runs the her therapy classes uh, or uh, sessions out of her home so they have all kinds of uh interesting things laying around the house to help in the, those sessions um but it, it turns out uh you know his mom is constantly trying to diagnose him or or analyze him and his life <laughs> and apparently he's pulled in a lot of that knowledge and you know he starts uh um helping friends in school uh with uh, their personal dilem- dilemmas and whatnot but uh it, it's kind of funny um it, it's 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 it covers a lot of um topics uh, not just uh, uh you know about him it's it, it's it's pretty it's pretty good I, I'll, I'll just leave it at that i don't want to spoil too much but yeah. you know, sex education mm-hmm. i think they're on they just finished season three uh if i'm not mistaken two or three uh that was your what your number three three so my number three is um it's a spin-off in the star, star wars universe it's the mandalorian and you know, having watched all of the Star Wars movies and the ones that are, I would consider what they're in between the nine known episodes of the Star Wars saga. Um, I was a little hesitant, especially since this was just on a streaming uh, service that it was going to be at all anything what I would want to watch. I mean, I've seen some of the cartoons, didn't like those either. So I watched a couple of the episodes and I was I was hooked. And I think they did two seasons of The Mandalorian, right, Dave? Did you watch the movie? All right. So this number three is The Mandalorian. It is a spinoff from the Star Wars saga. I was a little leery as to whether or not I was going to like it. Um, But I I watched the first two episodes of the first season and I was hooked. It was it was of the quality of a Star Wars movie. Um, 
uh, without without Jar Jar Binks, obviously, or those like weird looking Muppets, whatever. Um, but it was really good. In fact, like it is, it has become so iconic at work that this is the way it happens so much in our our group chats. It's ridiculous. This is the way. <laughs> well, yeah, at the Mandalorian, that's a great one too. I uh, I watched it as they came out, so I didn't binge them. It was like just ready to go. Let me let me get the next one, and uh, I think they're doing one more season. Yeah, I, but they've also got the the Boba Fett, the book of Boba Fett, which I I did the preview with my, my wife, and she's like, "Good good luck watching that on on your own." So We're, we've been watching that one. Is it good? It's a little bit slower. Okay. Um, and it takes place just after the Mandalorian because, um, how you caught you're caught up in Mandalorian, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, at the, at some point he meets Boba Fett and um, uh, gets his armor back. Uh, the Boba Fett gets his armor back from um, from Mando, and in the book of Boba Fett, he's wearing his armor. So that would lead me to believe that it was right after they met or just after the, the series ended. In, in the Star Wars universe, where is that after uh, Jabba the Hutt is killed in yeah. on Tatooine? Yeah, it takes place after the Mandalorian takes place a few years after the end of Return of the Jedi. Okay. All right. So that was that was my number three. Dave, what what we're up to number two for you? Yes. Okay. So number two is um uh the Vikings. And it it's on the History Channel. I believe it's on the History Channel, but mm-hmm. we watch it uh, through Prime or we buy the DVDs or we, to catch up because you can get uncut versions of it. It's uh, it's more um, it's a little more R rated as far as uh, content. Yeah. So, um, but Vikings is you know story of Ragnar Lothbrok his sons with two of his wives, uh, Lagertha. Um, and it's just uh, about the whole conquest of the, the Vikings um, in England and in Europe and, and whatnot. Um, one, of, one of the best characters uh, that, I, that I like think is uh, Floki. <laughs> He's played by Gustav um, Skarsgård. Floki. Uh, and there's yeah 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 um yeah which which we named our one of our cats uh our past cats was named floki um but uh yeah gustav skarsgård and you know he's he comes from a line of you know he's got some brothers uh who are in the industry one of his brothers played uh uh, pennywise from was it it or what's what's the yeah Yeah, that and uh his other brother has been in quite a few movies you'd recognize you'd recognize both of his brothers um but it's a it's a great series and you know i'm we still haven't caught up on this one no so no so um I don't we <laughs> yeah well we uh we have i think we're in season five still yeah see they keep splitting that up yeah you're in a better like i that's the one thing about binging if you watch it real time you're like, come on, just, I wish the season would just like continue on and be done. And, and you're like, ah, oh, now I've got to wait six months. So uh, yeah, huge fan of vampires, vampires, geez, Vikings. <laughs> um, yeah, huge fan. Loved it. And then they have a, uh, a, a series coming out, like a spinoff series or a sequel to the Vikings. I just saw today uh, coming out this year called um, something Valhalla. Cool. So, interested to see what that's all about. I, I really liked the, Aside from the the plots and the history, not the history, but like the the their, well, I guess you could talk about these people. They're like, it's like they're Paul Bunyan, right? Like it's just these like characters from the past, um, and you know the the Norse Norse mythology, their religion compared to Christianity, which was taking right. over at the time, uh, and them just really battling it out not the physical battles, but the religious battles, the, 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 you know, I can't believe you believe that kind of stuff because right. they're realizing each other's religions. So that was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, that was your number two. Yes. Okay. My number two is succession. 
and I'm trying to remember the name of the actor. I guess I should have done a little bit more homework on this, but I did some homework on another subject today uh, that took time up. But who? It, it's the guy who is the chief of police in Super Troopers. The older guy. Oh, yeah. Not yes. The shenanigans, okay? He is the, the patriarch of this uh, media company. They're filthy rich. Um, and it's a story about him and his his family, the the children who they seem to all be gunning for taking over um, after the patriarch, you know, steps down and stuff. So I think we're three episodes, three seasons in into this. And um, uh, yeah, I just I love it. It's a it's 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 just filthy rich people and they're really shitty views of people that are beneath them. Um, there's this one kid in the series that. Uh, He's a, a relative, but they've offered him to have a, a really crappy position within the company and they treat him like crap and he's not all that bright, but he's kind of like a comical relief in the show. But um, yeah, so Succession is definitely something we've, we've been, we don't necessarily binge watch it, but we are, if we're behind, we'll watch three episodes just to catch up. So, right. So the, my number one, and this is total winging it. I didn't put any notes down for this one and I almost didn't even put it on my list because I'm so mad at the series. It was one of, it was, it was either going to be off my list or it was going to be number one. Cause um, we came into the series like uh, after season five had finished and uh, that this is game of Thrones. So I don't know if you have, have you, did you ever watch game of Thrones? Yeah. Yeah. We, we watched the first two episodes. no, my wife watched the first two episodes. I watched the first episode um, and we were already watching so much stuff way back when it first came out that, you know, which now I laugh at because we were hardly watching anything to compare to what we watch today. But um, we waited. We just kind of put pencils down on watching that until the final season was announced. And then we okay. binge watched, I think, 40, 40 episodes. I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. 50 yeah so yeah we got into we started it at like i said after season five and uh we watched them you know we we caught up to, we got to like through season three and um I, i'm sure everybody who's watching this knows or have heard of game of thrones and i don't really need to get into the the plot too much but um uh so we were into season four and our, our friends who are like huge Game of Thrones fans said, you know, we're just like, did you watch this episode yet? No. So they're like, you got to come to our house and watch this episode. It's like, okay. And I guess so what it was? Sure. Was it the Red Wedding? The Red Wedding. Yeah. So they, they wanted us to come and watch that episode just to see our reaction because, you know, there's no, there. I mean, you would think that there are, that they wouldn't kill off certain characters, but for them, aside from a, a couple, there there was no sacred character. They would kill off whoever, whenever. Yeah. And that red wedding scene, just just like, you know, you just like what <laughs> what what did I just watch? And they were just, so, but um, by the time I got to it was a season eight was the last one. Was it eight seasons? I'm, then I was wrong. It was a seven. What? I can't remember. Honestly, I remember I specifically remember watching four seasons in about two weeks with my wife. We watched 40 hours of Game of Thrones. So but I can't remember. I thought it was seven seasons, but I could be again. We didn't do the homework. on Maybe this. maybe seven. I, I don't know. But you you watched all of them, right? I've seen everything. Yeah. OK, so, yeah, I think our longest binge session, we started watching. We had friends over and, and a couple of them most everyone left a couple of them stayed and we started watching it like midnight and we watched five episodes back to back to back starting at midnight so you know those are like an hour long and, yeah uh, yeah that was an intense season i think that was season five maybe or maybe it might have been five the, but, uh, the spoiler alert for our viewers who for some re reason have not watched this so if you want Fast forward a couple of minutes or whatever. I'll, I'll wave. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Just spo spoiler alert. So the at the moment that the White Walkers got a dragon, and I think oh. it was 
the season finale of one of the of the maybe the la- season before the last season was yep. holy crap they've got a dragon now the eye turned blue and it was like cut and scene it was like yeah, yeah i thought I thought it came over. I mean, I, I thought, okay, they're really going to go uh, against what uh, the common, you know, conclusion that everyone thought was going to happen. Where So, yeah, but that, that last season, it started out pretty good. And then it just, like, they have, like, they tried to rush, in my opinion, they tried to rush, you know, two seasons worth of content even into six episodes or it was like a short shortened season yeah and i just you know they made they made a big deal out of certain characters the whole series and then kind of just threw them away as as nothing and it was just it was in my opinion they it was poorly put together and uh i mean visually it was incredible i mean some of those scenes were just incredible just the, the, the content it just didn't hit for me indeed indeed i mean if you like dragons and knights and um they had giants too they're freaking giants <laughs> which was awesome in those fight scenes it looked like a video game they were just like these giants chucking people around you know right it's it pretty cool um yeah i like that one so and number uh one. number one and the viper uh you know who got his skull crushed in is the Mandalorian. Uh, yeah. Oh, is it really? Yeah, that's him. Oh. He is the Mandalorian. This is the way. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, cool. Very good. Number one. Uh, I could see where you did your homework, Dave. Is is this list? It's really good. All right. My number one is it's a show about the West. It stars Kevin Costner. That's all you need to know. Uh, it is Yellowstone. Um, it is a story about a family who has a ranch called the Yellowstone Ranch in um, in Montana. And they're trying to keep the land. Uh, it's all about the land and farming. And, and uh, it's pretty violent. Um, graphic. It's kind of another one of those shows you obviously wouldn't watch with the kids, even though there's horsies on the show. It's not a show you're going to want to watch with the kids, but um, I like it. It isn't cheesy. Like Costner has a tendency to get into movies where it's cheesy. He plays this cranky old patriarch. Again, that's my problem. And I'm watching too many movies with patriarchs in it, I guess, or shows with patriarchs in it. But uh, it's, it's a good show. It's a good show. Um, some current, like you may see stickers with this guy with the, the, cowboy hat on and sunglasses and a beard and it says can i take you to the train station i'm not going to ruin it for you but it's it's hilarious how people are making fun of the train station but um yeah so that's my number yeah it's my number one number one yellowstone and another one that made my honorable mention and it's not a series per se but it was something that we watched over the COVID seasons um we watched all of the Marvel movies in the chronological order of how you're supposed to, I guess, how you're supposed to watch them. Yeah. Cause I was, I, you know, I was never like a, a big fan of the comic book movies. I don't, you know, I watched Superman and Spider-Man and stuff like that here and there, but Iron Man and all those, they never really interested me until I saw the first one. And then, you know, we watched them all in order and that was another binge. We binged that quite a bit. That is a good binge. Um, yeah, and they're they're still coming out with more. I I I assumed that with Endgame it was done, but oh. it still goes on. So um, they're adding more and more to it. I assume. And Go ahead, sorry. I think I think all these new ones are well. Some of them take place after Endgame. Some of them take place in the middle of the series. Some of them are you know origin stories. So yeah. they they'll never end with Marvel, the cash cow Marvel. I mean, they have. What I didn't understand about Endgame was it was like all of the it seemed like all of the superheroes were there fighting Thanos' army. Where was Deadpool? Where were the X-Men? Like it it, it seems like that that's not part of the Marvel universe at all, but it is, right? I'm confused. Someone explain to me in the comments why they're not part of this. Why I want to 
I want to say, yeah, I, I'd be interested to hear some takes on it as well. But I, th I thought, and I, I, I'm probably wrong on this, but I thought there's a, a, another Doctor Strange in the multiverse that's supposed to be coming out that might tie in some of those. Hmm. Uh, so we'll explain it. And Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck is nowhere to be found in, in Endgame. Not that right. I, I don't consider him a superhero. Right, but not all Marvel are, I mean, uh, to me, not all Marvel are superheroes. I mean, yeah. some of them uh, perform heroic acts, but to me, a superhero has superpowers. Yeah. And I can't see somebody that just happened, has a, a spaceship, you know, that... Star-Lord. Star-Lord or something like that. I can't, I don't consider them a, strangely, I don't consider something like that a superhero. What about Iron it, Man, though? What about Iron Man? You think he's a superhero? That's, that's see, that's the age old debate. Is Batman yeah. a superhero? Or, you know, like there's the scene, there's the the dinner scene of all the superheroes going around the table. You know, what do you what can what can you do? What can you do? And comes to Bruce Wayne, he's like, Well, I'm rich. <laughs> you know, my I'm rich. Power. That's my yeah. superpower. Yeah. You know. But yeah, I'd be interested to hear what other people's uh take is on uh on that and what are some of your binge worthy shows? I mean, there's a lot that didn't get touched on, like, yeah. you know, classics, like, and I, and I haven't seen a lot of them, like uh, the, the Sopranos and uh, stuff like that. I just, I didn't see a lot of that stuff, but. Yeah. All right. Um, there it is. That is the five binge worthy uh, shows. Um, next topic we have today on today's episode is the one that got away. Um, uh, again, it's the thing that we used to have that uh, we wish we still had, and we're explaining why for various reasons. Um, Dave, you want to go with yours? So yeah, the one that the one that I think about all the time we kind of touched on last episode is my Brian Setzer Hot Rod Gretch. Um, don't ask me how to spell Gretch. I don't think anybody knows how. Uh, there's a T's and a, a couple, uh, like a C and an H in there somewhere, but it, it was the, uh, the G6120 THR, which is the model number of Brian Setzer, uh, with a big B, um, and it had a maple neck, maple body and had a big B, like I said, rosewood fretboard, um, and then Setzer's signature Filtertron pickups and, if if and it had 12s I, I i were come i think 12s come stock on on the the uh, hot rods and if if somebody's never played a gretch the 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 bigsby sound is just like any not like any other tremolo system or you know it, it's it's weird how it bends them all at the same rate i, I it's hard to describe but, um, you know, I, I got the Gretsch. I can't remember what year, but all the cool guys had them. Um, all the cool friends had one. Mm -hmm. I think you, you had two. Uh, uh, friend Dave had, had one I, that I think you ultimately got. And, um, you know, I always liked Brian Setzer and Stray Cats. And um, uh, I want candy. Uh, uh, wow, wow. Bow wow wow, that sound. I, I don't know if he was a Gretsch, but it was it was definitely something like that from uh, from that song. And those that sound just kind of stuck with me. And um, I originally wanted to go buy a, an Epiphone casino, and I wanted the blonde John Lennon style casino, and they didn't have it. And the guy handed me this Gretsch, and he's like, "Try that one," and I was like, just fell in love with it. The, the, the purple is just really stuck out uh, and uh, you know life happened and had to sell it and uh, sold it to someone in Switzerland um, kind of strange uh, and and uh, that's one that I would like to get back but uh, seeing how much it's gone up in value I just don't think I'll be getting the, that particular model I might get a Gretsch in the future but unfortunately uh 
three grand is probably a little out of my my range right now if you're like if you if you watch the show better call saul the beginning of that the the opening credits the the guitar i believe is a gretch if not it's a damn close imitation to a gretch sound and a bigsby in there because there's a little bit of the bending of the of the strings in there um i miss those guitars i used to have two i miss them dearly and i too I'm not really ready to go spend the money to live glory days over by having one. So I just regret that. So I feel your pain, Dave, I feel your pain. So um, what's, uh, what's, what got away from you that uh, you really miss? Quite not quite as expensive, but it, nonetheless, it still hurts to see it today. So in fact, I think you were with me when I bought this thing. It is the Proco Rat Distortion Pedal, Fuzz Pedal, however you want to call it. And the thing's a monster. It sits about, like for a foot pedal, it sits pretty high off the ground, I think at least three to four inches. It's really big and boxy. It has an unusual power supply, noisy as hell, but the the distortion is very, very unique. In fact, um, when I got it in, I want to say it was like the late 90s, I think I paid 70 bucks for it and it was used. Um, it was banged up. I actually wound up replacing the foot switch on it with a heavier duty industrial foot switch. Um, I did the soldering myself, my first soldering job ever. Um, and uh, I used it. I used it on our first studio album. Comes as no surprise that you're frustrated and you like to keep it alive. Uh, it, it like lasted forever on stage. It got beat up and trampled all over and it became a, a fixture in my studio we use it on a lot of things that i recorded for other, with other bands and then i decided to sell it for some stupid reason i should have just kept it. it wasn't taking up much room in my house and i sold it for i sold it for more than i, I paid for it obviously because it was starting to become rare and collectible i sold it for 190 dollars. so upside i made some money um but when i go and look today on reverb and if you're not familiar with reverb reverbs like the ebay but for musical equipment we're not sponsored by reverb um would like to be someday if we get a few more subscribers um but like so i look on reverb and i see the pedal it was a version two uh low serial number but not as low as the one i had and i took pictures of it to sell it on ebay at mine at the at the time and mine was uh, 12,000 or something like that, the 12,000th. And the ones out there today are like in the 15,000th. That's the lowest serial number I could find. And that pedal is going for $585. And just like your Gretsch, Dave, there's just no way I want to pay that much to have that sound right now. Come yeah, across. there's some uh, some famous people that uh, that use that. Uh, Dave Grohl is known to use the Proco, Kurt Cobain, uh, James Hetfield. Stop. Um, You're going to make me want to get one. Stop. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think, uh, yeah. All the cool kids are doing it. Yeah. And I, you know, fortunately, I, I, you know, whatever you got I, I, that I liked, I had to get myself, but I could never find the original Proco. Uh, so I end up getting the Turbo Rat, which is just a little bit more of a metal version, a little, a little more hot. Um, and I still have that. Uh, that's uh, on my pedal board. I use that all through my band playing days as my main main distortion. And uh, yeah, the uh, the original one that sure'd be nice to have back. Yeah, breaks my heart. <laughs> okay, the one that got away. So this brings us to the perfect album. And uh, tonight is today is your turn for this. Uh, I had some thoughts going in what it could be. And, you know, first I was like, okay, I have two albums narrowed down. It's got to be these two, but mm. it's not. It's, it's not, it's not Disar or uh, it's not um, uh, Gish. Right. And it's not Blood Sugar Sex Magic. Those <laughs> were like, those are like, it's got to be one of these two. No, Who I is thought it. I thought you would have thought it was. I, I'm surprised you didn't say like a U2 album because you know how, how much of a big U2 fan I am. Um, but those were good yeah, guesses. There are so many of those to choose from. I mean, War yeah. Boy, Joshua Tree, like those are all you know perfect albums. But like 
uh, back from our playing days, I just remember a couple of those that, uh, you know, especially uh, when you were a bass player, the, the flea, you like to emulate flea and his style. And, uh, but uh, yeah, so I, I'm just, I, I, I'm just waiting in anticipation. What, what is your perfect album? I got it wrong. <laughs> well, I'll just do a really slow reveal. So my perfect album, remember what Dave said, the perfect album is the thing you can just pop it in and play it over and over and over again. And you never get tired of it too. That's another thing I think about when I think about the perfect album. And mine is this band's third album. It is the 1996 Grammy award-winning album, OK Computer by Radiohead. And I originally never owned this. I didn't buy this uh, CD at the time of the CD. Uh, I got it from a friend and um, didn't listen to it a lot, but then I fell in love with it a little bit later on, like maybe two or three years later, because the CD was still in my collection. I still had it. Um, from the moment the the buzzsaw guitar and the airbag hits you and pulls you in, it takes you on a trip. It is, without a doubt, some of the best work I think they've done. You can argue with me on that. Put some comments out there about what you think if you're a Radiohead fan. Uh, if you think there's a better album, I just think this was the best work that they've done. And I've listened to In Rainbows and some of their later work. I just feel like this this album is is the one. Um, I did a little bit of research on on where this was made. And this this album was recorded. You know, they did a lot of the rehearsals in studios. But um, the other thing I like about bands when they do this is they come out with an amazing piece of work. And I think we talked about this on the last show that they want to do a body of work. They don't want to do a one hit. And so when, when an artist or band goes to a location and stays there and does this work there until they're done, that really does encompass the entire, the entire piece of work. And so uh, they, they recorded this in um, St. Catherine's Court, which is a historic mansion owned by the actress Jane Seymour. And they used, and I thought it was going to be, a, when I did the research on this, I thought it was going to be a studio with a ton of cool gear and you know massive reverb plates in the basement and all that kind of stuff and they didn't have that they actually were using a stone staircase for some of the work to get the echoes that they needed for reverb um, which I think is a really interesting way of, of doing that um, I think you two had the same effect they did it in a castle they recorded the unforgettable fire in a castle and it too has that same airy almost um, um, orchestra hall or a very hall like echoey type reverb to it that uh and that this album has as well um there's other songs that are are super catchy um lullaby like um that it is actually it's still in my head from last night because i was listening to this album just to kind of get my talk track down but this the song no surprises has this like very lullaby but very lullaby like um guitar work in it it's still in my head. I hear it right now, but it's it's not really a song that you'd want to like sing a baby to sleep in. There's a lot of uh, dyst dystopia type statements made, dystopia uh, dystopian phrasing um, from like paranoid android. Um, what was the one in there? That ambition makes you pretty ugly, kicking, screaming, Gucci little uh, piggy, which is kind of um, kind of very Tommy York. <laughs> Uh, so that song, that song was uh, Paranoid Android, a very popular song from it. I think it was the title track. I think that was the one they, or the the, the one, the number one release that they had from that. Um, it's funny because the songs that that were the ones that made the radio were on MTV at the time. They're actually not my favorite. Um, electioneering for those who like cowbell in their diet. Electioneering actually has a significant amount of cowbell in it. It's probably one of their heavier songs on the album. Um, I like it. And the other one I think is, um, is really interesting is this, uh, like if you were to, and they, they nailed it, by the way, if they were to write a song about Romeo and Juliet, they did it with this song. It's called, um, exit music. And there's a parenthetical next to it, exit music in parentheses for a movie. And it is like, and I'm going to ruin it for those who haven't heard it. But when you listen to it, you'd be like, oh, yeah, that could have been on any number of like five movies in the 80s when they were like the credits were rolling, you know, and the the, the Romeo and Juliet are well, they're not running away in the story and then they die. But like it is like the perfect song for that. And the other piece I, I or thing I wanted to mention about this album 
is you get you get an album and you listen to it and you're like okay cool i want to hear this one song and then you're done and that's just it you've, you've heard the whole album you're like eh, i only like that one song and then sometimes you you get an album and you listen to it or cd or tape whatever the hell it is and you're like okay i can only really listen my brain can only take three songs because it's heavy metal um it's just like you know i, I needed something to 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 mow the lawn and i'm done right um this i i put it in the corner on low it doesn't drive me nuts sometimes it does get into my head like an earworm we can talk about that at a later episode um but it is just it's a great mellowing out album it is definitely it is definitely not an album for people who are suffering from depression and i don't mean that in a funny way like it is it is not an upbeat light-hearted album it is deep and sometimes it's dark um but the, the the work is amazing and i i just um i i can't stop listening to it you know i i do i don't listen to it constantly but like it's something it's always in my playlist so so that's the album that's my perfect album cool i bet you i know one person who would really like that one song uh will ferrell he'd probably really like like the uh the cowbell uh yeah <laughs> it's got or, or, or bruce dickinson you know he puts his pants on like every other man, one at a time, except he makes hit records. There's only one thing I need in this album. It's more cowbell. Okay, more cowbell. I got a fever. Got a... And the only prescription is more cowbell. <laughs> one of Dude. the greatest, greatest episodes. All right. This is AJ. And Dave. Signing off. Stay safe and uh, like, subscribe, click the button. Uh, if you have any ideas or any topics you'd like us to talk about, just put them in the comments below. Take care, everybody. Cheers. Slancha. Stop touching that. <laughs> Beep. Yeah, push the play button. Oh, yeah, I can do that. Hold on. Oh, I've got it. I got three cameras I got to cover here. <laughs> uh, all right, man. Cool. Let me uh, let me stop recording here. Hey, everybody, welcome to episode three. Uh, today is the 106th Friday of 2020. Uh, <laughs> people are like, what? Can't get my mind around that. I don't even know what that means. Am I that high? <laughs>